Hello everyone, it's that time of the month. My name is Travis Nielsen and I want to make babies with you. Babies, babies with websites. Little websites. I make websites. For the past few weeks on my channel called Dev Tips, we've been building a series of videos called how to make a website from start to finish. And I really tried to give everybody like a seat at the table as we've gone through the whole creative process, starting with like discovery and ideation. We've talked about empathy and organization. We've talked about uh, doing sketchings and wireframes. And, and the last video we did was even a little bit of visual design. But I've tried to time this particular video for today so that uh, you guys and girls of uh, PHP Academy get the first technical lesson of the series, and I'm really excited to share it. You don't need to watch any of those other videos to understand what we're doing today. Today stands on its own, but if you did want a little bit more context, there's a link in the description below to a playlist that we've been building, and that's that. So today we're looking at setting up our development environment. We're, we're building a one-page, a single-page portfolio for an artist. It could be a, you know, a photographer, a designer, or a composer. It doesn't matter. It's a single-page portfolio type of website. It's always important to match the needs of the project with the capabilities of the platform. So for this project, I've chosen to use the static site generator called Jekyll. If you're not familiar with Jekyll or things like it, let me explain some of the fundamental principles involved here. Here's how it works. You make a template, you make content, you run Jekyll, and you get a whole site of individual static HTML pages. After you get the static pages, you can just upload them to any basic server out there, and bada bing, you get a website. This is really awesome and exciting for a few reasons. Number one, because your server doesn't need to talk to a database upon a page request, it's a lot faster. Number two, because there is no database, your site will be a lot more secure. There's no way to hack it. Now, and also because there's no database, there's less parts. Fewer parts means fewer things that can go wrong, so that means less maintenance. Fewer parts to maintain also means there's fewer things to pay for. So Jekyll is actually a very cheap way of maintaining a website. In fact, Jekyll websites are hosted for free on the very fast and very reliable uh, GitHub servers as GitHub pages. And finally, Jekyll is blog aware, meaning you can write your content in Markdown. So for bloggers and Markdown enthusiasts, this is awesome. For more information about the extended uses of Jekyll, I recommend you listen to episode number 54 of the Next Web podcast. where Jen Simmons discusses the topic with Young Han and Dave Cole, who successfully used Jekyll to power the American President Barack Obama's campaign website last term. So it's a very interesting podcast. The link is also in the description down below. Check that out. Jekyll is a Ruby app that you install on your system. It just received a big version update, and so now it's running on version 2. On Jekyll's website, there's some really fast and easy instructions on how to get started. So we're just going to follow these right here and set up our first Jekyll, Jekyll site. So the first thing we need to do is install Jekyll. So I'm going to say sudo gem install Jekyll. Great, now that Jekyll's installed, we can just check Jekyll to make sure we're up to the latest uh, version. So you do that by typing Jekyll-V, and it will tell us we're on version 2.0.3. Great. Okay, the next step is um, checking here at the quick start instructions to start a new Jekyll project. We will CD into our desktop here. That's where I want to put it for now. And now that I'm on my desktop, I can write Jekyll new Portfolio. Now, Portfolio is the name of the project. Now, it's created a new project on my desktop called Portfolio. So if I look right here, I have the project sitting there. Great. So um, I also want to CD into the project. Okay, now that I'm inside of my project folder, I can write Jekyll serve. And now Jekyll is running and it's working, it's compiling the, um, all those files we talked about earlier into a workable uh, site structure. And it also set up a server here and that's going to be at port 4000. So if I go over to my browser and I type localhost 4000, 
now we have our Jekyll site up and running and we can see this Jekyll theme which is the default theme honestly it's quite nice but there are tons of free Jekyll themes out there and some of them are quite nice also so now that we have our Jekyll site up and running like the work is nearly done but let's take a tour of our Jekyll project so we can get familiar with how this thing kind of works and how it's organized. I'm going to drag my project into my code editor and we'll be able to take a look at it. Okay, the first and probably the most important file in the Jekyll uh, structure is this configure YML, this configure YAML document. So um, it has a bunch of the settings. In this case, we're talking about the title, the, your email, um, you can write a description. Um, there's different settings that you can write here uh, where you want your server to be like I think I'm run over here to the configuration page here's all the the configuration settings for this config YAML um, so an example is if I wanted let's say my port to be something out uh, something el other than for 4,000. I'll write port uh, 8080 or something like that. And now, when I would restart my server, let's do that right now. Let's say command quit, uh, command or sorry, control C. Let's hit control C to quit, and then restart our server. And we notice that now we're on port 8080. So let's go over to port 8080. And now our site's working there, but it's not working at 4,000 anymore. Okay. So there's a lot of different configuration settings and the documentation on uh, Jekyll's website is really easy to understand and there's a lot of really cool things you can do. Um, but let's move on. After you have looked at the configuration file, there's a lot of important folder structures to understand uh, with Jekyll. So um, let's start with the site. The site folder is one of the more important ones and it will be automatically generated by Jekyll. This is not something that you need to manipulate yourself at all. In fact, you shouldn't touch it. Because what happens is when Jekyll runs, it will take all of the, the content, your pages, and your templates, and your includes, and your posts, and it will render them as they should be found and stick them inside of the, the site folder. So the site folder is a rendered version of all of your pages, and here is this is your blog so this this will create that URL look at that URL um, see how that the, all these folders come up this is how Jekyll works these are rendered um, fully uh, fully realized HTML pages they're not a template talking to the server on pull request or sorry on page request so all of this happens um, when Jekyll is running and not only does it create these pages, but it also moves all of your assets, all of your images and your, your JavaScript and your CSS will move into the site folder. So you don't have to touch it, but understand that the site folder is what is the final output. It's the product of Jekyll's work. Now the layout folder is another important one. This one, this one will include your, your uh, main templates. So the default template here includes the, uh, the structure and a, just a normal generalized page. And then when you get into specifics, so another page would be the, the post. You know, this one will make allotments for the, the day that it was published, the metadata here, if there's an author, you know, um, what is the, the post title, whereas the default post doesn't have any of that stuff. It just says what's the content supposed to be to spit it out into this wrapping uh, class of a div right here. Now those are the layouts. You'll notice that they're using a bunch of includes here. So if you want to write nice modular uh, code, then you would put your includes in the underscore include folder. So your head is all right here. You don't have to write it twice. It's just there and you can include it into all of your files or into your main template. And then your subsequent files will just, you know, inherit that. And your individual blog entries will all be contained in the underscore posts folder. So this folder right here, and let me show you how it's named. You name it the, the date that it's published and the title of it. And then um, Jekyll, when it's ran, it will put it in the right directory like we looked at before. 
right? So all of your posts would just fill up this folder right here, and then um, the output would be they would be placed in the right folder structure for the output. And you can use that configure YAML to say if you want to have your permalinks um, by date or just by name or by category. There's a lot of different options there. So it's all very clean and organized. I really like it. Now up here on the top of every content page, not necessarily the layouts and, and templates, but the content pages will all have this block of text above it. And this is called front matter. This area is really powerful when it comes to templating, uh, the templating engine that is Jekyll. All these little things are, they, I mean, there's, there's a few standard ones like date and title, right, that you can that use, that are very common, but, but they can be called anything and then just pulled out anywhere in the template. So I'll often make a special class name that I'll stick into the body tag of the page and then when I'm you know writing a post or writing a page I'll call the I'll, I'll write here like I'll do this body uh, dash class and then I'll when then when I'm writing this one I'll, I'll say welcome I'll say post welcome so that way it's a special uh, class hook in the body tag if I need to do any special styling for that specific post or page so here in this post, we can see that the front matter variable of the title is declared here. And then in the post's template, let's run over there, uh, in the post template, it's calling it right here. So it, it, that what we wrote is just going to be pulled into the H1 right there. And, so, and also lower in this template, we can see here that the variables are involved in logic. So, um, you know, if this page has a date, then print the date. If this page has an author, then print the author's name, and you know that's when you end your if right there. And you can you can nest your logic here as well into this whole block. You can make these YAML variables anything you want. They can even include like uh, HTML markups. You can like start inserting HTML into different pages dynamically. Uh, based on the content that of the of the post or page, so that can be really convenient, and you can get kind of clever with that. New to Jekyll 2 is the ability to compile SAS. So let me show you how to get that running. That's pretty exciting for me. Um, you run over to the CSS folder, and let's just create. Let's just change this into SAS, and then. Um, you need to go in the top of your SAS file, you need to put a YAML header. It doesn't need to be full of anything, just, it just needs to be there. And then as soon as you save it, you have to run Jekyll again, so I'm going to quit Jekyll and then run it again. Actually, let me quit it again, I want to show you a trick. I can run Jekyll, if I put dash dash watch, it will watch um, my code and if there's any changes, then it will output a new uh, version of Jekyll. So let me save here, and then you see how it just uh, triggered Jekyll again. So that SAS changes are running, and inside of my site, I'll have ooh, main CSS. Cool. So, um, so Jekyll now converts into SAS, which is really exciting when you used to have to run SAS uh, in the terminal in parallel with Jekyll. Jekyll also does CoffeeScript if you're into that. All right, that's it for our tour of the Jekyll Static Site Generator. Hope you enjoyed this video. Next week, we're going to jump into using Jekyll and start developing the project that we've been working on for the past two or three weeks over on, on Dev Tips. For more about the project that we set up for today, take a look uh, at this playlist here to, uh, to, for all the videos that we've created up to this point. And after we complete the project, I'll be giving away the, the site for free to use for yourself. So keep on peeking back on Dev Tips and checking out the progress there. Also, if you want to hear me talk a little bit more about Jekyll, um, a while ago, I did a collaboration with my friend Jonathan on a site that I used Jekyll to build, and John had a bad time. John hates Jekyll. So last week, I visited John, and I talked with him about Jekyll and see if I could help him to be converted over to the house of the Jekyll lovers. To see how that went, click this box right here, and there's also a link in the description of the video down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and a big thank you and much respect goes to Alex 
of PHP Academy who keeps on letting me post these videos here. Keep on hacking, guys. Thank you so much.